part of the beauty of the life uh, in, in any religious order, uh, monastic institution, but especially in Carmel, is, is that there is a rhythm to the life. There's a, a beautiful balance of, of prayer and work and study and service, community. And these things, um, they build a whole that's bigger than the parts. And so part of the joy that, that I feel, if I can call it that, of being in Carmel is trying to immerse myself in that rhythm and live it and be it. I grew up Catholic, but I kind of discarded the spiritual roots, tradition, and wisdom of the Catholic Church. I think a lot of people in today's culture see, if you think of spirituality, you think of the Far East. You know, you think of, oh, Hinduism, Buddhism, they're very spiritual there, but Catholics, you know, they, they may not be that spiritual, you know, they're more robotic. Um, but there's a deep spiritual and mystical tradition in the Catholic Church that I had no idea about. So that encounter with Christ first happened on the occasion of a parish mission. And at that parish mission, I went to really um, out on a limb, not really expecting to get anything out of it. I was just going to test the waters. I was just going to kind of see how the Catholics do things, um, to try to maybe see it with new eyes since I had been away from the church. And I was surprised by the humanity of the priest, um, his sense of humor, his authenticity. You know, people think when you get locked away, as people think in a, in a religious order or a convent or whatever, that you're shut off from the world and, and that you, you're not human anymore. And um, even, even when you live it too, you can put yourself in dark corners. And we can never, like St. Teresa would say, we should never um, abandon the humanity of Christ. So also we should never abandon our own humanity. It's been a great gift to experience the richness of God's gifts through, through friendship, through um, you know, experiencing genuine love. I like my brothers and like being around them, even if we're vastly different personality types and I drive them crazy and they drive me crazy. <laughs> but, but there's a goodness in just having another human being. Everyone in a Carmelite community is seeking to develop friendship with God through loving one another. And so there's sort of a, an accepted paradigm for, for um, being patient with one another. And it's just been a wonderful place um, to learn to love people. <laughs> We, of all people, should be the, I don't want to say it like this, but the greatest lovers out there. We should be the people that know how to love. That's kind of how I got here. It was just kind of went deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I read St. John of the Cross, who said, the only way we can really know God is through love. And after all this studying the faith, I started to realize, yeah, how could I know God? He's infinite and I'm finite. My brain is not big enough to hold everything there is to know about God. And that's when John on the Cross at St. Teresa of Avila started to fill that niche that I needed. Because they're not only teaching truths to feed our thirst for truth on an intellectual level, their truth is running to the core of our heart of hearts as being made for love. And they have, they're the creme of the creme in speaking that language. The Carmelite saints provide a wisdom to tap into the riches of St. Paul and St. John and these great intimate friends of Jesus, to know the depth of Christ as they knew him in spirit and in truth. That's the lingo of John and Teresa. That's the heart experience. That's the lived life. 
24-7 of John and Teresa to the point of ultimate transformation. And not just for them, but to show us how to get on board, to jump on that chariot, and to experience that grace. When I was discerning my own vocation and I was in that prayer group praying the rosary and this woman says, I love to pray. And I hadn't thought about it that way before. I love to pray and I think, well, yeah. We all pray, but to realize how much, it, how lovable it is. Through this prayer as a Carmelite that uh, encourages you to, to slow down, some to listen, I experienced this call this invitation to get off the surface. I experience kind of a settling down. St. Teresa of Avila, our holy mother, as we say, in the Carmelite family, uh, talks about prayer, contemplative prayer. Her beautiful definition is very simply spending time with the one who we know loves us. You love to spend time with your, somebody who you love. And, and the more you do, you're both enriched by that relationship. We have the most legislated uh, canonical hours for mental prayer, I believe out of any order, hour in the morning, hour in the evening. But then at the same time, flowing from that, bubbling from that, is an active life of ministry, overflowing into diverse ministries, missionaries, parish work, youth ministries, something I'm passionate about. Father Thomas and I had a retreat up in the mountains in Arizona. Um, one girl said, I came to this retreat not knowing, not believing in God. And I just came with my friends. And she said, now I've experienced him. That was powerful to hear. And that's right at the heart of who we are as Carmelites. Our charism is prayer, is an ex experiencing God, knowing him, deep friendship. It's at the foundation of all other charisms. And this is... Uh, a profound life we've been called into, somewhat, somewhat hidden, yet active, contemplative life of intimacy with God and leading others into that same intimacy. I would say that's a, that's, that's a real characteristic of, of, of our Carmelite charism. Uh, you know, we're, we're called to promote the journey towards, the inner journey towards union with God. People are talking about space journeys more and more. And um, you know, going out to other planets and being frozen for years and sent somewhere. To me, the most exciting journey is inner space. I think we all enter, or at least I entered, with very high ideals and expectations that um, I wanted to be a saint and I still do. But once we get to where God wants us to be, um, love becomes more difficult and shall we say I think uh, he puts us through a purification of love. You know before my my solemn vows I um, made an Ignatian retreat and it was a great experience um, and I remember um, having a lot of hesitation in becoming a priest it just seemed like it was too much it was um, more, than, more than I could live up to. And I remember in my prayer during that time, Jesus telling me in prayer, you know, your hesitations are not mine. And I think about that a lot. Well, St. Teresa tells us that we have to, to have great desires in our hearts and, and the Lord will give us the, the strength to accomplish great things in His name. And, and I do believe that in Carmel that is possible. I had to become the person God created me to be.
If I tried to be someone else than who I really am, I'm never going to be happy. And that's my gift to the order. That's my gift to the church, you know, that I was, I was the best person that I could be. Amen. All of my assignments have been uh, in parishes. Yeah, I love being with people. And as a priest, you're invited to become a very important part of people's lives. They are relating to you as a, an alter Christus, another Christ, hopefully, that's who we are, to people, and just bringing the most important issues and, and aspects of their lives to you, and you are privileged enough to be there for them. I think I came across the Carmelite community about four years ago, and looking back, um, that's really when my faith took off. I believe it was the true authenticity of the priests or the friars um, that I fell in love with and kind of just made me want to push to have that. Carmelites are very special. They really are. We really not, not only minister the sacraments and everything, but we give ourselves. And that's the only way we, we know how to minister. They were the first ones to, to teach me actually how to pray. You know, most of the times I knew just very communal prayers like Hail Marys and Our Fathers. I never understood the concept of trying to discern God's voice himself. And um, that was the beginning, I would say, the, the absolute beginning of my, my entire relationship with God. Every part of me was just drawn to the spirituality. I wanted to learn more about the Carmelite saints and I wanted to start living my life um, with this deeper union with Christ and um, listening, you know, the whole quieting down and listening. Um, that was all so new to me and it just started opening so much in my spiritual life. We have so much noise in the world and around us. My experience before I became serious about my faith was I always had to be busy, I always had to be doing something. You know, if I was working, a lot of times I'd listen to music or if I was, you know, going in my car or taking public transportation somewhere, I would you know, listen to my iPod or maybe listen to a book on tape or... Because if I didn't do that and I just had silence, then I wasn't being productive. There was no space for, for silence in my life. But it's in the silence and being alone with ourselves that we create the space and the environment to encounter God. And we need that. To be truly ourselves, to be truly human, um, and to grow in our journey, the journey that we're all looking for. We need that silence and that space for God. It can be a part of uh, our experience every moment, even when we're interacting with other people, having a conversation, when we're out on a busy street. If we have inner recollection and peace and a, and a silence about us, that, that reverberates and people see that and they feel it. Um, and they can absorb that peace through us. Um, I think we're I think we're called to that in Carmel.